Tref talks of this campaign. Final capital raise. One day left. You're recording right. and you're live on Facebook. What do you say? You're recording and you're live on Facebook. Facebook, we're live. I'm still getting set up a little bit technology wise, but I'm close. So we're going to do this. Uh, I got to tighten this thing up here for this phone and we're almost live on my page. So let's see what we're gonna do is. Getting there, Jim, getting there. Trying to. All right, well, there's a PSA for all those who are listening right now on Facebook and Instagram. Hey Mr. I'm J. Morrison. There. One man band, J. Morrison, quarantine, Tref Talks, digital production team. I am the on site producer, director, lighting, sound, camera, wardrobe, haircut, wardrobe, all that. <laughs> I decided to wear the same thing I had on yesterday to make life easy. All right, let's go. We're going to Tulsa Real Estate Funds. We're live on Jay Morrison. We're a little crooked, but hey, it's really what it is right now, guys. We're live on Trek Life. We're live on Tulsa Real Estate Fund and Mr. Jay Morrison Facebook. And now I'm going live from the legendary Legacy Center Black House Instagram as well um, because we have so many channels. Oh, shoot. My Black House Instagram phone is dying. I'm going to get killed if I don't do this. Hmm. Well, we're going to get a few minutes as we can. We are on Legacy Center Facebook. All right, cool. So we're going to Legacy Center IG as well. Guys, we are all channels streaming right now, almost. Give me one second. I'm going to turn that. And boom. All right, we're ready. <sighs> Man, it's hard work. You see my quarantine, bro? My quarantine... Scruff, uh, guys, um, it's gonna be hard for me to take questions on Instagram. So honestly, we're gonna rely on Facebook for most of the questions. I may run around the cameras and get some questions. Gene, I don't know if you can go to the Trek Gram or my Gram or have we jazz and we get some questions, somebody read them for us, you know, from the other side. Uh, or if you could do that from one of your phones, but I won't be able to see these phones to answer questions, all right? So anyway, let's get it kicked off. History in the making. Peace family, I am Jay Morrison, a founder, CEO, fiduciary, fund manager of the historic Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I'm coming to you live from the Black House here in Atlanta, Georgia, just five miles from the world's busiest airport, Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, two miles from Tyler Perry Studio, here on our 2.6 acre campus in this 30,000 square foot Class A office space where you see the completed development of phase one of our Black House Legacy Center right behind me in our historic Founders Wall that represents over 8,600 families and small businesses that have partnered as co-owners in our fund to where over the last two years, under two years, we have now raised over $8,750,000. Oh, my bad. Um, I just got an update. We are actually north of $10 million of capital raises and pledges in our fund. So just a few days ago, a week ago, we were a little old north of 8.75 million, 8,750,000. Million well, through all the recent partnership and energy, we are now north of $10 million of capital raised in our fund. And that is from nearly 10,000 prospective investment and partners in 22 countries. And this puts us just a few hundred thousand dollars shy of matching and meeting Marcus Garvey's in the Black Star Line's historical capital raise back in 1920 of $800,000, which is equivalent to $10.3 million today. So we are a little shy of $300,000 of capital raise for us to meet and possibly supersede Marcus Garvey and UNIA as the largest black owned group economics 
equitable company uh, in American history, right? It's a better way to say that, but yeah, that part, right? That we have come together as a black-owned company to be the largest black-owned company to execute equitable group economics in American history, meaning that there's been no other black company in American history that has galvanized more people for more of an equivalent capital raise per its year, per its time in history, using inflation, that we are number two in history and we're aiming and chasing our great ancestor, the legendary honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Um, and again, it's not about, we're using that as a fun undertone and we're using it as some community uh, collaboration and banding together um, I don't think that it's, it's obviously in any poor taste. It's about us saying, let's own more, let's build more, let's raise more, let's create more, let's develop more. Marcus Garvey owned a fleet of ships, the Black Star Line, the Yarmouth. He had factories, newspapers, media company, three schools, right? We want to do the same thing, and we want Tulsa Real Estate Fund to be a model for uh, the urban community, for the black community, and for small businesses to be able to see how you can pull dollars together from non-accredited and accredited investors leveraging, leveraging the Jobs Act and pull resources together and then go out and execute your business models. Our business model is comprehensive real estate and community development. We don't believe just in developing real estate. We believe we develop, if you can develop real estate, you must develop the people within the communities as well. We don't believe in putting broken people in pretty houses, right? Or broken people in a renovated pro property. So our uh, fund outside of just developing the black house or buying back the block in Macon, Georgia, buying uh, 98 units of rental units on two blocks of, of land in Macon, Georgia. Outside of that, we've been able to fund several minority developers all throughout the country including nearly a million dollars to black female developers and several million dollars to black um, male development firms who have brought opportunities to our, our fund. Uh, in the last uh, less than two years, about uh, 22 months now or so, we've been able to, um, to create nearly 100 jobs, contractors, vendors, staff, and most of those jobs have went to black home uh, staff members or real estate firms, professionals, executives, et cetera. And so we're just super excited about the fund, um, excited about all the new partnership, the new energy, and we thank everybody for just even considering being a partner. But uh, two stories I want to talk about that are, that are really uh, legendary for me, right? So everybody listen to this. So uh, one queen last night on our, I do a mentorship call every Monday night, uh, mymogulmentor.com. I do this um, mentorship call every Monday night you guys can join. And one of my students in the mentorship group was like, Jay, my family and I, you know, uh, we all chipped together and it was 50 of us came, the, uh, so 20 of us came together with $50. She, she got 20 family members who never invested before and got 20 family members to all invest $50 under a new first time family LLC. And then from that LLC, they invested and got ownership and interest in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I was like, yo, this is like, it's not about our fund, but it's about the spirit of group economics, right? The, the only way that a poor community such as ours, right? A financially poor community or statistically where our, our median net worth is a family median net worth is $17,500. The only way that we're going to start to see more increased family wealth is making more intentional family financial decisions, financial discussions, financial astuteness, financial education, financial awareness, financial discipline, right, and financial investment. So for, for her to be in the Jay Morrison Academy, learning about real estate, business and credit in Jay Morrison Academy, right, learning about LLC formation and syndications, learning about operating agreements, learning about this, but then to take action and leverage that knowledge base of how to bring our family into an LLC to be able to do this from the education and exposure to then the investment, where they put put $50 each. 20 family members, $50 each, that's $1,000. Something that many of the family members would have squandered away on some kind of liability, they then put into a family asset. And now, instantly have ownership in the black house, in our apartment complexes, in our private lending business, right? And the other business development and things that we do here 
under the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, ownership of our company as a family. Like that is, if you all have, I know you heard a million lectures from me, a million Instagram videos, et cetera. If you want to know the core why, the core root, the core of my vision, where is he going with all this? The core is getting our people, my community, to think about how we can do more with less and how what pulling our resources together looks like, not theoretically, but practically, actually, and in reality. That is the gist, my, my, my goal. Video clip moment coming up, Jane. My goal for the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, outside of this company being successful, was to produce a proof of concept and be a thought-provoking vehicle for our community, the families and individuals in our community, to see how we can pull our dollars together to do more. I always mention that 40,000 of us invested $1,000 to be a $40 million overnight. Well, let's break it down and just say, if 20 members in your family put up $50, that would be $1,000 overnight that you could invest to a family LLC to have been a part of this company, like the 100 plus LLCs on this wall, small businesses. That is the spirit of group economics. That's what Dr. King's dream really was. That's what Malcolm X really talked about when we suffer from political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about, what Rudy Ali talked about, what Marcus Garvey talked about and lived, and many of them lived, is about us thinking how we can solve our own problems as a collective. That's what Kwanzaa is about, our holiday, Kwanzaa, Kujama. It's about collective and cooperative economics. So it might be as big as 10,000 co-owning partners from 22 countries coming together to raise over $10.3 million. It might be that big or it might be as small as a family group. And that is the spirit of, of wholeheartedly why I founded and created a company, was to get us to think about how we solve our own problems and come together. And stop talking about Chinatown and, 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 and uh, uh, Koreatown and, and Greek Town and Little Italy and, and every other community, and the Jewish community and Coastal Town. And how they can all come together, the Little Israel, and how everyone else could build wealth, but how we can't when we can't as a community, as a black owned and, 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 and mission driven black empowerment based company to repair and restore our community and to fund and be fueled for black owned and minority developers and investors. That's our thing. And anyone can be a part of that from any walk of life. We're not excluding anyone from having ownership in our company, but we do have a clear vision and objective within our company to an, an empower a specific demographic and community, my community, our community, right? And so those who are last place, we all say through whether it be Christian principle or just a principle of universal law, to serve those least amongst us, to do unto others as you want them to do unto you, to serve those who are sick, who are poor, who are in prison. That's my ministry. And you haven't noticed by now, I may not have been that intentional over the last several years as I've grown more businesses, but I started my ministry in inner city schools, in the worst schools in North New Jersey, teaching financial literacy to high school children who are not exposed to this information. Everyone said I was crazy for going after the worst schools like Westside High, Malcolm X Shabazz, right, Central High, etc. They said I should go over to the advanced schools. They would get it quicker. But I said as a doctor with an antidote and with medicine, why would I go to heal children who are not sick or have already been healed? My first response as a doctor is to go to those who have the most dire need. Same thing with this fund. If we're talking about raising capital, of course, I can raise capital from wealthy friends, clients, customers, and a wealthy pool of institutional investors all day. But if we raise capital from only the wealthy, then we exclude those who make less than 250000 a year or have a net worth less than a million dollars, which are the non-accredited investors. This was all the heart and mission of our fund. This is what was historical about our fund. When Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, raised 800000 in 1920 during the Spanish flu, they were offering $5 per share. Small investments from the Black community just 60 years after our enslavement to raise $800,000 with no social media, which is equivalent to $10.3 million today. So when we talk about chasing Garvey, we are chasing that spirit of that incremental small investment 
and how we can be contributed to one company with one vision, with one honorable and integrous leader or visionary here for the purpose of serving the community, not for self purposes, self satisfying, self glorification, or whatever you want to call them purposes. Like that's my spirit and that's my commitment within this fund. So we are close to achieving history, right? We've already made history as a first black owned real estate crowd fund in the history of America. We've already made history as the second largest black owned company in American history to successfully execute group economics. We've already made history as the largest black owned real estate crowd fund in the history of America. We've also made history as the first black owned company to successfully execute group economics in the last century, the last 100 years. With a successful day and a half, not even day and a half, about day and a half now, midnight, April 29th is your last chance to partner with us, to have ownership with us, to be a co-owner with us. And your name will go on our co-owning legacy wall in our phase two development. So for all investors, who invest in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, who partner in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, who become a co-owning member of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund by April 29th at midnight, Pacific Standard Time, you have the opportunity for your name to be memorialized on phase two legacy wall, or on phase two legacy wall, right? By going to investwithtref.com or tulsarealestatefund.com. Both sites point to the same page investwithtref.com by midnight, April 29th, and you'll have ownership in the Black House. You have the opportunity for your name to be memorialized in phase two of the Legacy Center. You have ownership of our multi-million dollar portfolio. You have interest in the private dollars that we lend to future minority development companies or the current companies of which we have capital lent to right now. We're supporting people buying back the block in multiple cities throughout the country. You'd have your interest in economic stimulation from the nearly 100 jobs that we created and more jobs that we wish, we wish and hope and project to create on the future of the fund. Every development comes with more job opportunities. So we're talking about in Black Wall Street, the Black dollars circulated in the Black community for nearly a week. Nowadays, the dollar in the Black community circulates for less than six hours. So, we have the opportunity within our fund to raise capital together, deploy that capital to black developers, development firms, both men and women, to be able to hire staff in which we support vendors, contractors, development partners, general contractors, appraisers, attorneys, realtors, engineers, architects, elevator inspectors, roofers, plumbers, landscapers, fencers, in all that, majority of which have been black owned or minority owned firms. That's circulating also our dollar. And then as we perform and become profitable, we receive dividends and profits and distribute those dividends quarterly out to our investor pool at an 8% preferred cumulative return. And now we're circling the dollar back through the investment payout of dividends and distributions. So the investment comes in, the company gets built, staff gets paid, contractors get paid, developers get funded, developments get resurrected and funded, people get hired, profits get made, this is all our vision, our projection of what we're living, and then inevitably through profitability, God willing, and through, <laughs> through our best efforts, we produce profits and enough profits in which we create dividends, payouts, to our investors, and now we're recycling our dollars. So this is the vision of Tulsa Real Fund. So that's one. I'm gonna get to the questions in a second. I want to get that out. Two. Another thing that got me super excited and happy yesterday was a king that we talked to on our live stream, and we went to his name on the founders wall, his family name, and he, his brother, and his mom are all on the founders wall, all three of them separately. So that was super cool to see a family come together and to be able to make this opportunity happen. And to see so many first time investors come in, uh, people that have never had ownership, like and that was part of what I said to Queen. When she told me that she was a part of this, I said it, it warmed my heart because she did it with her children as well. 
And I, I did this. I said in my Instagram post, I'm going to say this verbally. I, my mom had an ugly green station wagon. We were staying at 4501 Schindler Terrace, and we were on a Section 8 program in this apartment complex. And I just remember driving in this ugly $200 green station wagon being so embarrassed and us being so poor. And I just remember and I thought about what would it do for my morale as a 11 year old, 12 year old, 10 year old Jay, if my mom one day, instead of saying, hey, we're going to Virginia for a vacation. Hey, I got you a Nintendo or Super Sega Genesis for you know, your, your gift or whatever, but say, hey, we sacrificed this particular birthday, holiday, Christmas, Valentine's Day, whatever. We sacrificed that for us to invest into this company, for us to have ownership of an apartment complex just like we got. It ain't much, it's only 0.01% ownership. It's a whole bunch of other people involved, but it's not a timeshare where we go stay and we get jerked and all that, but it is actual ownership in a company that owns all kinds of buildings. And we can imagine if 12 year old Jay could have rolled by with Lori Morrison, Artea Morrison, Arthur Morrison, my cousin Boz, and my sister Joy, and my father Art, all six of us in a two bedroom apartment. And imagine if we could have rolled by the black house, six of us in a two bedroom apartment. But for $500, we could have said, and back then in, in, the, in the early 90s, it would have been even less, we could have, uh, we could have said, hey, we own a piece of that right there. You see that black building? Let's go on something. We can, own, we can see our name right there. Imagine what that would have did for the Morrison family instead of us just going to prison to see my father or going to rehab to see my father or seeing my mom struggle. So for me, as a visionary of this fund, I believe God gave us a vision through me for a progressive move for our culture. Part of what I wanted to do with the fund was that, create that opportunity for not to, not to uh, for those who could afford it, for those who could revert their liability capital to owning assets so they too can feel the feeling of ownership. It's something special when you see your name on a deed. At 25 years old, I saw my name on a deed and I was like, oh snap, I'm the Lord of the land. But I'm not just a landlord, I'm the Lord of the land. That ownership, if you haven't experienced it, it does something for you to have ownership. It gives you power, a morale boost. It gives you a, a social boost, a psychological boost. And so these were intangible things of why I created the fund. And why I'm glad many of you are a part of the historic Tulsa Real Estate Funders opportunity. So I'm gonna take some questions. I want to share some moments that warm my heart. Like y'all understand, like I'm really like a black man from, you know, from the bottom. And I've experienced so much coming up um, that I empathize with so many sectors of my culture. Like I've been a little boy in the wick line and in the food stamp line and going to the store with the food stamps. And I've been a little boy with Google clothes for Christmas. And I've been the guy sleeping in a shelter. I've been on parole and work release. I've been through prison. I've been through the streets. I've been through depression. I've been through bankruptcy. I've been through divorce. I've been through a lot. So I relate to so many emotions within our culture. And I'm not saying TREF fund is the psychological end all be all to everything in our culture. But to, but to relish, like, look at this. I'm, I'm looking with y'all. Look at this. Where else have we seen this? When you walk into the room and you see Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey. And you see Maya Angelou. And you see so many others in our community. And you see black excellence on a display, on the forefront, but then owned by black people. Free this whole building, free and clear, no mortgage, completely owned by us. The whole campus and the Qualified Opportunity Zone. So that kind of stuff is most exciting to me as a pioneer in our, in our community. And we're chasing the pioneer, the legendary pioneer, Marcus Garvey, guys. Again, by April 29th, midnight, to invest with us, TulsaRealEstateFund.com or investwithtref.com, link in the bio. So I'll take some questions on real quick. So will investors receive reports on occupancy rates for properties with residents quarterly or annually? So our investor reports goes into the holistic stability of our fund and our portfolio. We do not go as to deep as to go into every occupancy for, for every asset. We don't get that deep. Um, I wouldn't mind doing some classes on some of our stuff. Part of the reason why is because the deeper we go into our person, I, I love to be fully transparent. The issue is, as our information gets out, we also cause vulnerability for our assets and for our investments. 
So as much as we have supporters, we have those who are detractors as well, right? And so if we're disclosing our whole entire marketing plan, stabilization plan, development plan, and all the ins and outs of our business, although it can go to our audience of investors, it also can be disseminated out to the public, right? So there's some level of disclosure and discretion we have to use in regards to how deep of transparency we get. And we have gone really, really deep. We just do them in private investor meetings from time to time, but we do do a quarterly financial report and monthly newsletter for all transparency for our fund and an annual financial report to a third party independent auditor. So I'm glad to mention that. We have had uh, two third party independent audits the last one, 2019, had no adverse opinion about our fund. Um, or fund financials. Uh, Cornelia Small, I invested in initial offering. If I wanna buy more shares, can I only purchase in 500 increments? So you can, your minimum investment is $500, but you can invest 550, 650. So it needs to be in $50 increments, but minimum $500. It could be 750, 2500, $50, whatever it is. Um, let's see. J.O. Skis, if I want to buy more shares in the next couple of months, will I be able to? Uh, April 29th is our final capital raise and the end of our security offering. So after April 29th, there will be no other opportunity for you to gain more partnership with Tref outside of potentially, which I gotta actually have our team confirm, if you bought shares from someone else already who owned shares or someone who wanted to redeem shares or wanted to whatever, right? That's the only way on a secondary market, but I do not believe we'll be offering any more securities under this particular company. Uh, how much is each share? Yeah, so shares are $50 per share and a minimum of 10 shares or member units, right? Which gives you uh, the eligibility for 8% preferred return and 50% of the profits. Um, can I buy as an individual investor? versus as LLC. Yes, you can buy as an individual or an LLC. The individual process is a little smoother in regards to a paperwork uh, verification perspective. Uh, Rashida Shabazz, Mana, uh, do you recommend forming an LLC for tax purposes before investing? Um, I know tax professional. I'm a businessman with some tax you know, experience in my businesses. I will say that one, you gotta consult your accountant about that or tax professional. But I will say, in LLCs, your losses and profits they flow up to you, the person, anyway. And um, I don't see a significant uh, advantage or harm to investing as an individual versus an LLC. Either way, those profits and losses will be offset by your other uh, profits and losses in your other businesses, right? Um, based on my understanding without giving you tax advice as a non-tax professional. Uh, how old do you have to be to invest? 18 years old, you must be to invest. You can invest with a partner, co-owner uh, for your children. And you can get your member units and then you can uh, bestow those member unit shares in your will to your children or our team can help you after to figure out how to uh, do that through our third party transfer agent. But the will is the easiest way to, to get it done, best way to get it done. All right, so those are our Facebook questions. Facebook, you guys got any more, please like and share. Um, give us any more questions you guys got Facebook. I'm gonna see if any of the phone uh, pieces got any questions for us. Let's see, I'm gonna scroll. Uh, let's see, nothing there on Legacy, great. Uh, let's see. Hold on, trying. No. Gotcha. My first time investor. Can you explain how investing with traffic would change how file taxes? All right. So there was another question about taxes, how investing in traffic would change how you file taxes. Uh, the biggest thing to be to look out for is that as a partner in Tref, we file as a partnership, and so all of our partners are sent K-1s, which are in, in a partner tax return filings. And so during the end of your tax season, you may have to file an extension. Sometimes it takes us some time to gather all the documents from all the vendors to complete our financial audit. 
but you will end up getting a K-1 and then you would add that K-1 to your filing. You can always file before your K-1, but then you have to pay for an amendment once you get your K-1, which will give you any flow up of profits or losses through the business. From best King, of my King, you don't see the chat? Oh, the chat, what do we got? I did on the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I said this anymore. I don't know if you, you can read any off of my gram. I'm trying to read from the phone, but I uh, did the chats. Let's see. Jay, I believe in you. I believe in us too. Um, let's see. Try to get any other questions on the J page. Yeah, Gene, can you go to my page for me, baby? See if you got any questions. So yeah, anyway, family, I'm I'm man, it's a lot of hard work. Like right now, you know, I'm still overseeing developments in the middle of the pandemic. Um, ready to open the legacy center back up for our co-working space and media hub, finish our phase two development. Uh, we have a host of community empowerment classes. We have some building with local middle schools and high schools. So we're gonna be empowering our community holistically. We got curriculums for our people. We got financial services, co-working space, virtual offices. Like this would be a one-stop shop, business in a box. And I'm just super pumped up about getting my feet on the ground and really restoring the south side of Atlanta, this East Point community, um, and uh, this, this, this West Side community as well. So, and just nationally and digitally, just putting in that work. So we got a couple more questions. Um, how is Trev? hedging their investment decisions against a downturn in the real estate market, especially given the potential amplifying effects of COVID? That was a very eloquent question, Queen Nicole. Start to play. Mm -hmm. So how we're hedging, Queen, is twofold. One is we understand that we need to be patient in this market and very aggressive in all offers in this market. So <clears throat> as we promote, as we approach partnerships, syndication opportunities or any direct acquisitions or even any lending opportunities being super conservative in regards to our LTVs or making discounts on our market values, et cetera, right? So we're definitely doing that. Uh, secondly, what we're doing to kind of hedge is we're putting ourselves in position to be that bridge uh, lender or equity partner for opportunities that come up. We understand that most banks are pulling back, most private lenders are pulling back. So we're putting ourselves in a position to be kind of that equity partner where we see gaps in the market from now higher down payments due to lower LTVs. So we're putting ourselves in a position to get a participate in deals, being conservative about values, making sure that we're protecting our upside, considering um, what I consider to probably be a 20 or 30% discount coming, um, doing all that, uh, but as we still being well capitalized, can take advantage of land bank, city auctions, syndication opportunities, and discounted and distressed properties. Um, someone said, as, 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 will current or future TREF properties in low income areas promote your mission, vision, and value to support sustainable, up the code living for communities living in those properties? Yeah, we do our best to make sure that, again, it's comprehensive community real estate development. So we do our best to make sure that assets we participate in are benefiting um, our values and our mission. Uh, we can't guarantee with every developer, every syndication, that everyone will abide or adhere to, or adhere to that, or every property will be for that. <coughs> but it's definitely, again, it's, it's rooted in the mission, in, in the blood, in the veins of, of our fund. So uh, we do have some community redevelopment, some affordable housing, some, uh, we have a great home buyer program we're considering with a small city here in Georgia about mixing in um, home ownership and social repair to our development uh, ecosystem. So we have some cool things coming up. But you got, as you see, I do the work. And I say that as a man, as a person, but our company does the work, our staff does the work, we do the work, uh, my wife does the work. And so past this raise, as you've seen from the last nearly decade from me, you're going to see more of us doing the work. Um, that's what it's about. It's about us being innovative, being intentional about empowering and restoring our communities. 
Um, I got, let's see. Well, property management companies also abide by them. Um, again, we, we, we set principles, we set values. Uh, we have some comprehensive projects coming up. They take a lot of time and energy. I've been wanting to do a comprehensive redevelopment project with mixing empowerment within our development. It takes focus, King Will, and energy. Like things to us to make up these ideas and us to a light bulb go off with, oh, this sounds good to have an ecosystem where home buyers got to take these classes in order to get incentives from all condo conversion. I got the whole business plan, but I, I need time to focus and execute it and get the right people around me to execute it. And it's a lot of work to do something so comprehensive. I'm not saying it's above us, I'm just saying it requires a different level of, of dedication and focus, which I'm willing to do, but we gotta do it after this capital raise and once we got settled in here at the Black House. Uh, what if all you wanna do is produce and shoot movies, sir? That's not all I want to do, but if someone wants to produce and shoot movies, they can lease the studio space being developed here at the Black House. Uh, when Tulsa puts out dividends, can the individual reinvest them back into the fund? Uh, that is another question that I'm getting for our council. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to reinvest because we are ending our security uh, or offering of securities or offering of shares. So with us ending this offering of shares or these securities, with us ending it, there is, um, for us, we need to, um, I just lost my thought. So with us ending the offering of, of securities, then we would not be able to necessarily issue, issue, issue extra shares. So if you try to reinvest your dividends, there won't be any shares for you to get or members for you to get for those dividends. So I gotta ask counsel about that. Uh, let's see. If you don't mind, Queen, if I invest today or by midnight tomorrow, what will I benefit from this or what will I own? Because Jay is using a lot of huge college words and I need to know the meaning of what he's saying, layman's terms. So if you go to our website, investwithtrep.com, you'll see it broken down in layman's terms, um, but I can slow it down or simplify it for us right, right now. If you partner with our fund by midnight, April 29th, you, if accepted and qualified, we have blue checks on you, uh, if accepted, you will instantly be an owner in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. You will own shares or member units of our company. So you will be a co-owner and partner of the Tulsa Fund LLC, Tulsa Real Estate Fund LLC. You have interest in that company. Uh, with that interest, you then have interest in the properties we own under the company. Hence, the Black House. You'll own your piece of the Black House. This will be your building, your family building too, um, in regards to passive ownership. Uh, you do not get any management control, but you do get passive ownership uh, and equity of the company. Uh, you also own our 98 unit apartment complex. You own your interest in the other deals that we do, right? So that's what you'll get. You'll be eligible, um, meaning that you'll be in line to receive 8% preferred returns. Preferred meaning that before any other profits get split, prefer preferred comes to you first. So every year you get a preferred cumulative return. Cumulative means it adds up every year, right? So if you invest, you partner, and you don't get a dividend year one, you still owe that 8% from year one. So on a $1,000 investment, 8% is $80 a year, right? So $1,000, 8% is $80 a year. If you don't get it year one, the year two is 160, year three is 340, and that 8% return adds up. After everyone is caught up and paid their 8%, the fund then splits profits 50-50 with our investors. So we make sure everyone gets paid their 8% cumulative, add it up, and then any additional profits or revenue after that, we split 50-50 with our fund partners and the management team. The management team also receives 5.5% management fee that goes to our management company that handles all the management functions of making sure the business is operating and functioning properly. Um, that um, is a one uh, is is a, is a uh, fee that's due uh, annually. 
Um, although we don't uh, typically take the full fee annually, but it's due annually. And within that 5% management fee, it is, does not include, or excuse me, it does include, meaning there's no extra fees in regards to acquisition fees, development fees, transfer fees, transaction fees, disposition fees, re financing fees. So we did not debt our operating agreement with a bunch of hidden fees. We have one disclosed and transparent management fee with which we operate all those functions under that one fee. Um, returns are paid quarterly, meaning every three months, there's four quarters in a year. Uh, that's after and upon profitability. So when we build a black house, we make revenue and profits from leasing it out to our co-working shared workspace, from our other profit sharing of our business models, from any event space leasing, training room leasing, conference room leasing, virtual address leasing, right? All that revenue from the black house, that revenue goes up the trash, right? After expenses. And that's how we make money here from the rental income, residual income, et cetera. And we grow the business that way. And the kind of the same thing for our apartment complexes after expenses that revenue goes up the trash. We loan out money to developers. Those developers pay us points or interest or fees for us to loan them money and they pay us mortgages and we make money that way from the mortgages and the debt, the money that we loan out to other people. So that's a little bit of kind of layman term breaking down of what you would be getting into within our company. Um, and you'll be a part of all the historical and social impact that our company um, makes and has. Uh, let's see, question on Facebook. Uh, May I ask a deep question? What if the real estate isn't your thing, sir? Just like if you're one that's six nine doesn't mean playing basketball is your thing, which most people assume. Uh, thanks for your time, sir. Well, here's the thing: real estate investing may not be all of our thing, but the reality is, is that we're all in real estate. Every single one of us watching this live stream right now is in or on a piece of real estate. Whether you're on the corner that's owned by someone or the city. Whether you're at the black house, it's owned by the people. Whether you're at home and it's owned by you or your landlord. Whether you're at a hotel, it's owned by the hotel owners. Whether you're at a restaurant, it's owned by the restaurant owners. All that is, whether you're at church, mosque, or temple, you're still in real estate. Whether you're at your children's elementary school or your college campus, which might be quarantined right now, you still would be in real estate. So whether we like it or not, we are automatically in real estate, in life. The earth is one big ball of real estate. Whoever owns the most land wins. Being a part of this fund is just your opportunity for as little as $500 to be a part of different kind of real estate, a diverse portfolio of real estate that you otherwise may not have the opportunity to be a part of in your life, especially if you're not interested in real estate so much. This is your opportunity to still own your shares of buildings and assets. Um, or how dividends paid out, we covered that. I invested 500, we want to know how the paperwork went through. All right, so once you invest in your partner, you get a confirmation email and it tells you what to expect next, where to look for your email, how many days or weeks, etc. So that's all your confirmation email. And guys, we have to, as a community, we're going to do business, business at a high level. We got to understand that business is ran through emails, not Instagram comments, not uh, texts, and not calls. Business is predominantly ran through email. So I need you all who are gonna be partners to make email a part of your life now. And to star and save our emails so you're getting all your updates, your information. Um, thank you for answering. If someone has an opportunity, are there certain parameters that the deal must meet in order to get capital, debt or equity? Yep, after the 29th, guys, you can submit all deals to TulsaRealEstateFund.com. We'll have our submitted deal tab for you all um, on that side. Let me take some more questions from the gram real quick. All right, I'm looking for questions from the gram. Gene, you got any for me? I can't read these. Nope, I don't see. I think you've answered all of them. All right, cool beans. So while we're doing this, Guys, we're going to go and we're going to, again, do another Founders Wall check for all my partners and founders. We're back on the wall today. It's roll call time. If you haven't seen your name on the wall, you want to screenshot your name, I'm going to take my gram and Tulsa's gram 
over to the Founders Wall, guys, and we're gonna participate in some Founders Wall checks. So if you guys on Facebook wanna go over to Instagram at Mr. J. Morrison or Tulsa Real Estate Fund, we're gonna do a Founders Wall check. Thank you all for your questions. Thank you all for your consideration. Thank you all who have partnered for your partnership. Um, and just understand the spirit of our fund. This is an amazing opportunity. And many of you and many of us may not be familiar with the Honorable Marcus Garvey because schools didn't teach us about Marcus Garvey. They didn't teach us that a black man came from Jamaica to meet Booker T. Washington to learn and collaborate on studies. But before Booker T. Washington and he could collaborate, Booker T. Washington died. So Marcus Garvey went around the country preaching and teaching his philosophies of self-determination, self-empowerment, and the black race, Africans, from the African diaspora, no matter what country you landed on, that people of African descent start to take a higher approach of dignity, self-respect, self-reliance, self-determination, uh, self-economic ingenuity and power. And so Marcus Garvey went out and did some historic things for our community, creating several businesses, raising 800,000 in capital during the Spanish flu, equivalent to 10.3 million today, starting the Black Factory Corp, the Black Nurses Corp, uh, the Black Mechanics Corp, multiple schools he owned. He looked at the different sectors of, uh, of trade, of commerce, right, and professions that we needed, the schools that we lacked, and he went out and he made it happen. And he pioneered it. He also galvanized over 20,000 African people throughout the whole diaspora, whole globe. He organized 20,000 people to be at Madison Square Garden for nearly a month in the 20s. He organized 20,000 black people at Madison Square Garden in 1920. And he don't even tell you about that. So we're talking about chasing Garvey. We're talking about chasing the legacy of the kind of spirit that had the thought, the trailblazing pioneering ingenuity and innovation to save black people from around the globe, around the diaspora, come to Madison Square Garden in the 19-teens and 1920s, and let's have a convention. He had pens and we had he had just different branding and you and I plates and spoons and our own boats. And it was just about excellence. And that's the spirit in which I'm maneuvering and operating out of today. We have a prospective investment body, co-owning partnership body of over 10,000 investment partners. Having raised over $10 million now today from 10,000 plus people or small companies from 22 countries. That's the spirit of Garvey. Not a talking spirit of Garvey, not a blogging spirit of Garvey, not a tweeting spirit of Garvey. I'm talking about 8,600 names on a wall, Tulsa Real Estate Fund partners, co-owners, and co-founders. I'm talking about black excellence on your own campus. I'm talking about funding our own projects, our own deals. I'm talking about bigger than this fund. Please believe our mission, our goal, and this vision is bigger than this one TREF Fund 1 that ends April 29th at midnight, which we want you to be a part of before April 29th at midnight, investwithtref.com. But it's bigger than that. The fund is the proof of concept and the beta test of what we can do together forever moving forward in real life. I want everyone to overstand that point. If over 10,000 of us can come together to raise over $10 million in real life, imagine what we can do in every other fund after this fund with influencers bigger than Jay Morrison, with a proof of concept now that we built some trust. I know this was hard to go out for the first time and all of us to do this. It was hard for me to do it. And I know it was hard for many of you to trust that this is a real opportunity because we haven't seen it before. We're asking people to get involved with something they haven't seen before in four generations. Our parents' parents haven't even seen this before. We're the second largest black-owned company to execute equitable group economics in the last 100 years. So I get it, but imagine the future after TREF now that we've proven the model. That's what I'm happy about. That's what I'm yelling about. We prove something big for our people. We don't gotta say, oh, that community did it, that community did it, that community did it. No, we did it. We don't gotta
got a place in the Jewish community for a reference in group economics. We don't got to promote to the Native American and Aboriginal community as a reference, although they're our brothers and sisters. We don't got to point to the Asian community as a reference for group economics. You can point to the black community, to the black house, to the legacy center, to the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, to you as a reference of group economics. You can point to Liana Lachie, Leon Thomas, Leon Smith, Leon Robinson, Leon Pierre, Leon Nicholson, Leon Massey, Leon Johnson, Lee, Leon H. Robinson Jr., Leon Daniels. <clears throat> we, can, we can point to them as proof of group economics. And the 8,600 names here, and the new thousands of names on the legacy wall in the back, we are the proof to this generation, to the future generations, so they can look forward 100 years from us when there was 100 funds created from now. And say, man, a black community controls 100 funds, $50 million each, $500 billion, or $5 billion of assets under management, all starting from a, a, a resurrection, a reincarnation, of the wheel of Garvey. We're not reinventing the wheel, we're just moving the wheel forward. Garvey already gave us the wheel, he already created the wheel. Trump is just moving the wheel forward. Now, what do we have 10 wheels in our community? Um, listen, Trump just raised $10 million. 10 $10 million funds is $100 million for our community, for us, by us. This is the proof of group economics, it's the proof of Black Wall Street, it's the proof of the UNIA, it's the proof of the back star line. We are it. We are the evidence of what we need. They say, well, Gene, you might help me on this. I ain't been to church in a little while in quarantine. But they say that faith is the evidence of things not seen, I believe, right? Substance of things hoped for. I always get that reversed. Faith is the substance of things not seen. Nope. And hope the evidence for. of things hoped for. Nope. Substance of things hoped for. Oh. Evidence okay. of things not seen. I haven't went to church Monday in a while. So faith <laughs> is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yes, sir. But we're not even talking about, mind you, we have more work to do. We got dividends to start paying out. I can't wait for that day with them checks or them, or them e, the e deposits hit, hit, the, hit the accounts. That's going to be our next big celebration. I project, I hope, we estimate, I can't guarantee, but putting our best foot forward. But we're not even talking about the substance of things hoped for or the evidence of things not seen. We're talking about the substance of things accomplished. And the evidence of things executed and tangible and physical. We ain't even talking about the thought no more, the theory. These founders had faith. There was no black house, there was nothing to see. These founders had faith. First month, first week, first day. No assets. We're in. We believe in it. And that level of faith, that level of intentionality, that level of camaraderie, that, 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 that offended a whole sector of our community who could lack, lack faith. They thought it was wrong for us to come together. And now we have shown the substance, and many still think it's wrong for us to come together, but I don't know any other solution. When we know and we recognize that our unity is greater than the atomic bomb, says the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I believe that. We saw what Garvey could do. We saw what Black Wall Street we could do. We saw what Sweet Albert could do. Many of us have Black Wall Streets in our own cities. We saw and we know what we can do, but can we do it? But will we do it? And so I'm just super excited to give about the opportunity. April 29th, midnight, investmenttreff.com the opportunities to be an owner in our company, to practice group economics in real life, not promising you perfection, but promising you some form of progress.
Yes, Quinn asked, are there any tenants at the Black House? Yes, we have a current shared workspace membership model. We have full occupancy upstairs at the Black House. Our internal companies, under the margin group of companies, Legacy Center Financial. Uh, we have attorneys leasing upstairs. We have production companies leasing upstairs. So we have a full lease upstairs of our 16 offices at the Black House, and then building out our phase two next. And we have our co-working space as well. Um, oh, I was told, okay. So tomorrow we are doing our Trepathon. That's gonna be really cool. So we have so much content, we've documented this whole process. Tomorrow we're gonna be giving you guys hours. Gene, how many hours of Trepathon? 12 hours of pre-recorded content. And we're gonna give you a 12 hour marathon, Trepathon of just the, the building of Tulsa Real Estate Fund, chasing Garvey in real life. We got a 12 hour on Facebook, on my Facebook, Mr. J. Morrison, on Tulsa Real Estate Fund Facebook, 12 hour Trepathon all day tomorrow. Some of our unseen content, unseen walkthroughs, developments, and all that. We want you guys to come check that out on Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Make sure you share that with your friends. We're going 12 hour straight, Trepathon Marathon. And then tomorrow night, let's close out. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 12 p.m., 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are having the final capital raise for you to be a partner of this historic company. It's either you're in, you out. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, those of us who are partners, we're partners. And I'm happy with that. Now, I'm really happy. Like, I've been there I've been happy that I just do so much in a long time. I'm an old school happy right now. I'm happy because this marks a time where we've identified who's in, we've identified this fund is moving forward, we've identified the final capital raise, no more energy towards that, now let's just operate. Let's go do the work. I'm a workaholic. Jay Morrison is Mr. Outwork the Work. We're going back to the corner classes. We're back to digital classes. We're hosting live classes here from the Legacy Center on how to build digital businesses. We're offering digital streaming services. We're offering life insurance services, tech preparation services, real estate licensing for agents. Yo, we're about to go to work. Y'all ain't seen empowerment on blast. Watch me. Watch me work. Watch what we do out of this headquarters called the Black House. You're going to see Black excellence like none other, God willing. That's, that's the goal. Lending out capital, developing other projects, negotiating with local cities and governments about deals and opportunities and developments, we're going to work. But just a proof of concept of one fund, and then we're going to go to work on future funds in the future. And I really am interested and intrigued to help manage and advise as a, a really an advisor and counsel to other um, entrepreneurs who want to create their own funds. I got the sauce. Two years of experience. I have the understanding of the technology needed, the business flows needed, the compliance needed, the treasury needed, the analytics needed, reporting needed, right? I get the business. So I'm super excited to duplicate this model because for me, it's all about solutions. The whole, my whole mission is about solutions. I just realized I'm on a basketball team. My basketball team is losing 450 years to zero. And I got to come up with some plays for us to come back. We got to put some points on the board. Got to put some points up. Talking and blogging ain't putting no points up. Panels ain't putting no points up. We got to actually do some work. So I'm excited about this, this, you know, this company, man. It's, it's, it's our company. It's forever in history, our company. And nobody can take that from us. This is our company. And uh, to date, we've done some, in my opinion, remarkable things. Creating 100 jobs. Creating a stabilized real estate uh, a, a stabilized projected uh, real estate portfolio projected value of 12.8 million of now raising over 10 million in capital close to the honorable Marcus Garvey being the second largest black owned company in history to execute group economics equitably and successfully to be able to fund all the minority and black owned development firms black women firms to be able to own and develop this class A office space, to be able to buy back the block 98 rental units, to be able to project an 8.7% IRR to our fund partners by 2024, 
I'm excited about what we're gonna do next. And thank you all for your partnership, man. Let's go to this founders wall real quick while we got a couple minutes. Facebook, you guys can hang on if you want. If not, we out. We're gonna be going to the founders wall. I know you guys will be able to see it closely. I can't move the TV that close. In my page, let's see, any founders, click, shout your name out, and let's get to uh, some founders, some foundersness. Again, I'll be back tomorrow. Tref talks tomorrow, Trefathon all day. I'm going back live tonight too. I'm going live all night, probably two in the morning, three in the morning. Listen, when it's done, it's over. This is it. So I got to go hard these last several hours. So do you, we're asking all co-owning partners. Hold on. We're asking all co-owning partners. Talk to your family and friends. See if anybody, ask them. Does it mean anything to you to be a part of the first black owned real estate crowdfunding history? Does it mean anything to you to own a piece of the black house? Would you like to own a share of an apartment complex? Would you like to take $500 minimum, $1,000, $2,500, $5,000? Would you like to revert that from a liability, a future bottle in the club, a future pair of jeans, a future pair of Jordans? Would you like to revert that liability into an asset in a historical company and a portfolio of assets? Go ask your family. See if anybody's ready. Uh, two more questions real quick. Been trying to invest before the deadline as well. I take the class, but want to talk to a, per uh, talk to a person, uh, look that website. Um, it's going to be difficult to talk to anyone right now. We are flooded. You can try. The email is info at TulsaRealEstateFund.com with your questions. Uh, any questions, past the website. Info at TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Uh, global investors, please email global at TulsaRealEstateFund.com if you want to invest globally. Uh, someone else said, are we fully invested if we don't get through the money laundering checks before April 29th? Or are we kidding? Yeah, if you don't get through the AML checks by the two, April 29th, uh, you still should be good uh, to get qualified after, long as you get your investment submitted in by midnight, April 29th. All right, cool. Let's go to the founders. Whoa, who we got? Facebook, somebody's asking for look for Chanel Watson, S H A N E L L Watson. Got you. Okay, Facebook, I got you. Chanel Watson, let's go. S H? S H A N E L L. All right, S H E N L L. E N E? S H A N, Alpha. S H A N E L L. S H A N. Let's go to N. So Chanel Watson or Watson Equity Financials. All right, Chanel Watson. Okay, I got a Chanel Smith. Oh, I got it. Chanel Watson, you're right here with me. Got you in the building. There, I got you there. Oh, this froze. What happened here? Hey, what is the phone froze? The truck freeze? All right, who else we got? Who else we got on the phone? Let me see. The truck freeze on me. Cornelius Small. They're asking for Cornelius Small. Let's see if he's on the wall. Cornelius Small, let's go. Cornelius Smalls. Why are you right? Oh, turn the lights on real quick. All right, I'm just going to pop them right now. Side of the room, like all right. Cornelius Small, check it out. Um, see the little bar, Cornelius Small, you in the building. Yeah, hey, hey. Walter Wynn, Walter W Y N N, Walter Wynn, Walter Wynn. We got Grant Cardone in the building, cash for Grant Nosa. Walter Lynn. I told Grant we need to do something together in a tear month that we never expect. Grant Cardone and Jay Morrison. I told you, Grant. Uh, let's see. Walter, I don't see a Walter Lynn. I was listening. No, 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 no. 
okay? Osiris Kimathi, O-S-Y-R-U-S, Osiris Kimathi, K-I-M-A-T-H-O. Osiris. Osiris. O-S-Y-R-U-S. Oh, second. Trying to get this glare off this thing. Can you get this shot off? There we go. Osiris. O S Y. Yep. What's the last name? Kimathi. K I M A. T-H-I. Got him. Nice. Osiris, you in the building. Osiris, you All right. We got Rita Williams. R-I-T-A Williams. All right. Rita Williams. Hold on. I'm going to Instagram real quick. I got you, Rita. One second, please. We're going to see C's. Jacquard. Let's see. C-H. C-H-I. G A I K. K before S. Oh, come on. Where you at? Boom. Screenshot that. Well, we over here for the Chester real quick. I see you, Chester. Peace, King. E. Let's see, Chester Chung. Oh, you went to a chest? Where you at? Amigo, track life. All right, what was that one, Gene? Rita Williams, R I T A Williams. Rita Williams, guys, give me what you think. You know, you have less than a, a, a day to hop in, be on our legacy wall in the back. Rita, R I T A? That's correct. Man, we showing up, man. We showing out. Track is showing out. Love this energy. Rita, R-I-T-A. All right, William, come on. This is easy today. I'm getting lit right now. Trev Light. All right, Rita, we got you. Let's see. We got uh, Latoya Coffee. All right, Rita, I got you. I got you, L. Got you, L-T, L-C. Latoya Coffee, L-A-T. See a girl between, I don't know. Natanya, Natanya, Boom, you live. Y'all might be lucky. Y'all might be trolls. Y'all real trip partners. <laughs> real trip partners. Let's see. Or Cox, Mommy the Bear. Let's see. Let's see. Where's the horse? Q R S R. Boom, R Cox, Mommy the Bear. Boom, 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 boom. But you gotta tell me what the R stands for. This is an R. I mean, it's gonna be tough there. There's too many, too many variables. Oh, God, you gotta give me a whole first name, first name. Um, let's see, Grant. When you Grant, you said the name over here. Let's see. It's <laughs> Grant. Um, <laughs> Gordo, you one of the family members? First month investor. Let's see. Let's see, Gordo. GC, I know you had 500, they had a thousand please. Check in your app. Let's see if Grant Gordon was a family member. He used our, he used our attorney, we got the same attorney. So we're like cousins. <laughs> we're like, we're like proud of cousins. Where's the R's and the G's? I see a Grady and a Grady and a Grant. I don't see a Grant, Grant. Grant. <laughs> that would have been in the story. We got to get your chance, Grant, by tomorrow night, midnight. You could be on the Legacy Bowl. I'll make a whole plaque for you. Five grand minimum. You got it. Invest, in the, invest, in, invest with the black community, Grant. What's up? Let's do it. 
Show, 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 show solidarity. 10x. 10x the grant. 10x the 500. 5,000 grant. Put your name on the wall and clap out. Let's go. Deal. Put your spot. Deal or no deal. Grant card going to the Black House of Atlanta, Georgia. Pull up. And we have a whole text event here. We got 30,000 square feet. In real life. 500. Where well, well, I'm from, our word is our bond. Everybody see it. Put a half a ticket on it, Grant. Let's do it. All right, who else we got? Kevin. All right, that's Bond. You, you know how to invest. We've both been through the process. And congratulations on your success in your process and just all what you do. You know you're a giant in the game. But I'm holding to that 500 foot. Listen, Grant Cardona, Jay Mor King Jean, Grant Cardona, and Jay Morrison team up. The whole real estate community will have no idea what to do. They'll lose their minds. The two in the real estate community have successfully executed reggae tier two funds. Somebody called you Judas? That's, that's messed up. That was harsh. That was, that was super harsh. My, my audience could be a little, <laughs> that's what, you know? <laughs> No, I appreciate that. Let's get back to some more founders. So, so Grant Cardone will be on the left. I'm standing here first at the Black House. Grant Cardone will be on the legacy wall in the back at the Black House, pouring back in, supporting the community. Our fund is open to all walks of life. Our mission remains the same, the economic development and stimulation of the Black community, the urban community, in which Grant gets a lot of his business. And I think it's right that he poured back in to one of the communities that patronizes his businesses and that's dope. That's group economics. We, we, have, we have people from all walks of life in our fund. We are just about our mission and we don't discriminate, right? We are, it's, it's, as you get to race, it's still the human race, which is the original people of the human race. So it's just, it's about us to collaborate. So I'm down for that. I would love to grant, I told, I told Grant the DM, Jay Morrison, Grant Cologne, collaboration, what's up? Let's go empower the, the youth. Grant, let's do an event for 21 and under. Just the young kids. Kevin oh. says Grant is from Lake Charles where Treff invested in the apartment. Oh, Grant, you from Lake Charles, Louisiana? We got a 14 unit that we funded out there. Somebody just told me that. We funded a 14 unit out there for uh, a black woman who, who actually found something with $300,000 of equity and had trouble getting funding. We funded her. But yo, a fund together? Grant, a fund together, what would a what would, a, what would a fund look like with Grant Cardone and Jay Morrison on a Reg A fund? <laughs> 50 million overnight. Let's do it. We both know the process. We know the regulation. We know the loopholes. We, we know what software technology. We know the compliance. We know the regulation. We know the K1s, the financial audits. Yeah, yeah. Big boy talk. Real life. Assets and liability, cash flow. So, okay, can, can, can you unlock the app, please, real quick? Oh, no, never mind, don't. I'm not allowed to go outside. <laughs> J&G. J&G, Grant, what are we going to call our fund? What do we call the Grant Cardone, Jay Morrison collaboration fund? That shit needs a special name. I don't know what that is. That's like, that's like, that's like Hove and Springsteen coming together. That's like Jay-Z and Springsteen coming together. It's like, it's, it's beyond epic. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the action. I love the message that I represent. You really pull it off. I'm not a branch here, no. I'm not a talk to the walker. So if you put it out there, you know, I thought about this idea in 2015, this whole concept in 2015. And as you see, I pulled it off in real life. We pulled it off in real life. Um, so I'm in action. And I know you went to action, you went to 10x action. So, you know, let's get to it. All right, so as Grant and I think about the name of what will be probably one of the most historic funds in the real estate community in history ever, they would never, if Grant were going to Jay Morrison, collaborate on the fund for all people. Thank you, appreciate you. If we literally collaborate on the fund, it would show such a level of unity between literally the black and white community, between all communities, brown communities, all between, 
It would show so much unity if Jane Marshall and Grant Cardone did a fund, and they did a fund that did something that has social impact to it as well. That would resonate louder than anything probably bigger than the presidential election in 2020. They would never have seen I like it because I'm not just a black guy, I am a black man that's intentional about the repair of this community. I'm unapologetically black, which makes it super dope for, I have other partners, other ethnicities and walks of life and mentors and friends, of course, right? But it'd be super dope for Grant, who's such a big brand, um, to partner with someone who has a big brand in the black and urban community, us do something together and show that to my community, you can be on positive with black, you can love your community, love your own, not be racist, and still do business at all levels of all levels of life. That right there is global economy. That's black, that's black power, that's Marcus Garvey, that's what it's all about. Garvey talked about that. Garvey said to black people, stop blaming white people in the situation you're in. He said, you should actually expect for them handling their business for their community, and what are we going to do for ourselves? I'm a backsteer. So I'm all down across ethnicity collaborations and just in advancing elevation conversations. Like, yo, let's take this shit bigger than let's take it. But well, we say let's be 100. So I'm saying let's 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 bucket, let's 100, let's let's let's, let's, let's 100 x this thing. Exponential growth, and I love it. So let's go to some of our founders, man. The, the global economy fund, right? That joint had investors from like everywhere. And it'd be like the most, it'd be like Michael Jackson's view out of the world. Right? Super dope. All right, let's see who we got, man. Back to the founders wall. Kevin Kalais. Kevin, I think it's Kalais. Kevin, C A L A I S. Kevin Kalais? Let's see. Kevin. I think sometimes I find these names. Kevin, 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 Gale Estates LLC. Okay, our first, our first company of the day. Gale Estates. Boom! Look at you, Gale. You, you stand out in the world. Gale Estates. Everybody do that. Ownership. Ownership. Drop flag. <coughs> uh, Angela Spites. Angela Spites. S P E. I G H T S. Angela, S P E I G H T S. Spice. Oh, S P E. Yeah. Got gotcha. it. Angela. Oh, I got it. She's in here. Angela Spice. Daddy and KY Services, let's see what you got. Boom. Daddy and KY Services, screenshot that. Let's see. Louis Stanford, got you. L-O, L-O, Lewis, Lewis Stanwood. Oh, we live, we might bat a thousand today. We bat a thousand today. Lewis Stanwood, you got it. Tref Life. Let's see where we at. Let's see. Oh, anybody outside, anyone outside of America, go to global, email global at TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Everyone else by midnight tomorrow, investwithtref.com. Um, Let's see. What you got? 
Elise, E-L-I-S-E. -E. Elise? Mm -hmm. Elise right. of Vida, A-V-I-E-D-A. A? -V -I -E -D -A. a? Yep. So Elise first, E-L-I-S-E. -E. Okay. Let me find that first. E-L-I-S-E. Yes, sir. I got a visa. A V I E D A. Yep. In there. Nice. A visa. Put in there for me. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's family business. Family business. All right, I'm gonna take us to the back real quick. Um, I want to go show us this uh, back phase two, and then we out. So right. Facebook, I'm gonna have to go show the back phase two on my Instagram, Mr. J Morrison. Come hop on, check us out. Thank you guys for joining. I'll be back. Listen, Trepathon tomorrow. I'm gonna be back. Trepathon tomorrow, 12 hours of content going live. So our phase two in the back. Thank you all for supporting. Um, we're considering partnership, investwithtref.com. We are less than $300,000 away from achieving and matching the Honorable Marcus Gardner's capital raise record for the black community for equitable group economics of 10.3 million. He raised 800,000 in 1920, which is equal to 10.3 million. We're counting inflation, and our goal is to chase Garvey in real life. So I'm super excited, man. We're close to that record right now. Um, and with that capital, we just going to do the work. That's it, man. Work over words. Just type words all day. Work. Work time. All right, Team Gene, thank you. I'll be on the gram. I'll hit you tonight. Let's go check it out.